In this tutorial, we're going to do our first recording into Cubase. We're going to set up a audio track, set up the inputs and outputs so it's configured for our sound card, record a short piece of audio, investigate the mix console and how it looks when you add more audio tracks. First, we're going to start with a new project in Cubase. We're going to select More and Empty. And then we're going to use the default location for now. And we're going to give it a project name of test first try and click create. Now that's give us a folder to hold the project with a name. Now let's actually name the project itself and save it in the folder. So we'll go to file, click on save as for the first save and give it a title of first try and click save. Because we're using a, an empty project, we just need to check a couple of things first. We just need to see that our audio interface is configured to work on this. So we go to devices, device setup, and we just first check to make sure our ASIO driver is set, which it is. And then we go to the ASIO panel, and I'm just making sure I've got direct monitor on because that's the one I use. I want to hear what's coming into my sound card to make sure the sound is getting there. And I'm just going to check the control panel as well of my audio card. So let's just click on that. And at the minute I'm using a buffer size of 512. I could reduce that if I want to, but I'm just going to keep it in the middle for now. Make sure our clock is internally sunk so the computer and the audio card is triggering the clock. And as I can see, the sample rate is at 48. So when I actually configure my project, I'm going to set that to 44.1 because I'm working with audio sound for music and not for video at the minute. So I'll click OK on that and OK here. I'll quickly just set up the settings. So just a quick, quick way of doing that. You can go to your menus and do it. But if you double click on here, which says 48 kilohertz, 24 bit. And I'm just going to change that to 44.1, 24-bit. And while I'm here, I'm just going to change my frame rate to 25. And I'm not going to touch anything else. Everything else can stay as it is. So we've configured the audio card. We just need to configure Cubase now so it knows that it's using the audio card. So let's go to Devices again, and we'll go to VST Connections, and we'll go to Input. And in our Inputs, we can see we've got a stereo input and device port is SPDIF. Now, I know that's the wrong device port because my audio card has got a lot of inputs and outputs. So I'm going to set that to the first one, which is ADAT1, and the second one, ADAT2. OK, and on the out port, that is set to ADAT 1 and 2. I'm actually going to change that because my configuration uses 23 and 24. And also, because I am using the control room setting in here, I just need to make sure that's configured properly. And it is. My monitors go out the SPDIF port of my computer to my speakers. Now, your setup could be different. Your setup could be, if it's just a basic audio interface, it could be just inputs one and two here and outputs one and two for the stereo out left and right so now i'm going to add an audio track now the way you can add an audio track there's a few different ways of doing it in cubase the proper way to do it would be good to go into project add track we've got audio track instrument midi sampler and we've got a few other tracks, effects tracks, group tracks, and lots of other things down here. I'm going to add an audio track. So I'm going to click on that, and a box pops up, and it instantly says, what sort of audio track do you want to add? It says, how many do you want to add? Do you want to add a stereo, or a mono, or surround track? It's going to be left, right to the speakers. You can add the track name here if you want to. And what output do you want the track to play on? Now, if you remember, we only configured the stereo output, so that's the only one we can actually have it on here. And then it's got the option to add track. 
So that would be a basic way of adding a track. You can also go into Browse, and if you were recording, say, uh, a vocal, you could choose in this list what type of vocal you were recording. So, for instance, if you were recording a male vocal, R&B lead vocal, you could select that and click Add Track. And what that would do, it would actually load in presets and EQ settings that would be the style of that vocal. Now I would say when you're first starting off, don't do that, do it manually. So we're going to undo that. And then we're going to go add audio track, take the browse off, and we're going to actually select a, we're going to select one track. It's going to be a mono track and it's going to have a stereo output. We're going to add track. Now, the reason I'm using a mono track is because I'm going to be plugging in a microphone in a minute. Because a microphone has one connection, one input, we only need a mono track for that. If we were using two microphones to record the same sound source, we would select stereo track. OK, so now we have our audio track. Now, let's have a look at some of the uh, areas of Cubase. So we've looked at the arrangement window, the track list and the inspector. On this side, we've got VST instrument rack. Uh, we can hide that with this button here. So just for now, I'm going to hide that out of the way. And the lower pane, we have this lower, lower zone area. So I'm going to open that. So you can see now we have got our mix console in Cubase Pro 9. And we've got stereo input, stereo out, which these are sort of hardwired to our audio card. And for the software, we have got audio track one. OK, and this will make more sense in a minute. Now, every time you add a track in Cubase, for instance, an audio track, it will appear in here in the list. Now, just to demonstrate that, I'm just going to add another track. So we go to project, add track and audio track. And this time, I'm going to add four. OK, now watch what happens now. So I've just added four more tracks and they've also appeared in our mixer. OK. But now what we're going to do now is click on the first track. We're going to make sure our input is set to use the microphone, which is coming in on the left hand side of the stereo input. OK, so we click on input. And then we just make sure stereo in is on left. OK. And the output is just stereo out. Then that will play back through both speakers. So now that's configured, we're ready to record. So um, I'm just going to move away from my uh, video microphone and pick up the microphone going into Cubase, which is over here. And uh, before you can hear me in Cubase, what you have to do, you have to press the record enable button. You can either do it in the mixer or in the inspector or if we stretch the track down on the track itself. OK. And once that's clicked, as you can see, there's a little yellow light next to it with a speaker on it. That's called monitor. So that means when I speak into the microphone going into Cubase, we can hear playing back through our monitor speakers what's actually going on the input. So I'm just going to switch off my microphone going into the video software. Right, we're set up to record our input signals coming in on the channel. Um, so let's press the transport bar in a minute. But first we do, what should we record? Um, let's try something by a really, really old recording artist, maybe the first recording artist, Thomas Edison. And so here we go. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. And stop that. Right, and as you can see, uh, we've wrote our first audio file. And I'm doing our first recording. I'm just going to switch back to the uh, video mic. So let's just uh, take this one off. And turn this one on. Let's put the microphone down over there. Right. So what we've got here, uh, I've got a file called 01 
space 05. We can pull that down with this thing here, the zoom tool. We can zoom that one over there. And we can see what we recorded. So I wasn't very loud in the mic, but we got a recording. Let's just hear what it sounds like. Okay, so press play. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Wow. I wonder if this will ever take off this recording malarkey. Right. So let's have a look. We've got the audio file. So how is that saved on our computer? Well, when we first started this project, we assigned a folder for it. So now any recordings that are recorded will go into that folder. And if we want to look at the recordings in our project, we can go to something called the pool. So we click this area over here. So we can click on that. It says open pool window. And in this audio, folder with the little red dot on if we go on the plus we can see the same file name and it says it's been used once in our project uh, it's got a bit more status data here it's been recorded it's not muted it was recorded in a project with a temp of 120 at the time a 44 signature hasn't got the key set it's got an algorithm of Elastic Pro, if we were time stretching, the information for the file is 44.100 kilohertz at 24 bits, and it's a mono file, and the file lasts for 13.387 seconds. Okay, that's how long the recording was. It's a WAV file, and it was recorded on the 10th of February 2017. Uh, original time. Uh, and also the image file, because it's a low recording, we can't see that very well. And it's recorded path is where it's stored on the hard disk. So I recorded this on the SSD Windows hard disk. And this is the area it's saved into. Okay, so that's all the information there of that file. And that's about it, really. This is our first recording into Cubase. And on the next video, we will look at how to record with a MIDI controller keyboard. So that'd be recording instrument tracks using the internal sounds in Cubase. So until next time, thank you for watching and remember to subscribe. <laughs>